this is how we start our video. Welcome to Palama. This street is pumping. This place is insane. I feel like I'm in the Italian job. We're Matteo and Misha. We recently moved back to Italy to pursue one of our lifelong dreams. Pulling off the ultimate Italian road trip, traveling to all 20 regions of Italy. And we've started off in Sicily. This week, we are in the vibrant Sicilian capital, Palermo, where there's three euro spritz everywhere we look and we eat our way through the bustling streets, exploring historical icons and discovering why it's the Italian capital of culture. We've made it to Palermo. And we checked in to Hotel Ambasciatori for 80 euros a night located close to the train station and a few steps away from the bustling historic center. And it just so happens that it also has one of the best rooftop bars in Palermo, which I'm not mad about, I'll be honest, because I mean, look at this. And now in true Italian fashion, we're off to find an afternoon spritz. I know Aperol Spritz is a big part of Italian culture and I've tried really hard to like it. Really, over the years I have tried, but it's too bitter for me. The thing is, when it's only three euros, um, so surprisingly, this one's probably the better of the Aperol spritzes I've had. It only makes my eye tweak like a little bit. So maybe I'm educating my taste or I don't know, but I feel like I'm really growing up with every sip I take. It's good. Yummy. Do you like spritz? I do like spritz. That, that subtle taste of orange peel makes that little bitter beauty in your mouth. Mixed with a little bit of Prosecco, some soda water, and you have the perfect concoction for any three euros here in Palermo. Three euros. First impressions of Palermo from my side. This place is crazy diverse. There's so many different cultures, so many different religions, so many different races. This place is insane. Like there's just a whole concoction of everybody from everywhere. And it's just truly impressive to see the diversity here. I've been reading a lot about the Sicilian history and the culture, and this island is known for having all the different religions and cultures come together and actually live in peace. To have this here a thousand years ago, and even today, it's just something truly impressive. So we're on our way to breakfast. We need a little bit of espresso. The city is bustling today. It looks so good. <laughs> Look at your oh my god. That looks so good. So I ordered something called a green coffee, and from what I understand, it's a shot of espresso. Then it's got pistachio cream, normal cream, and sprinkled with pistachio nuts. So the espresso in the bottom is really warm and still like an espresso mixed with cream, and the top is cool, fresh, and fluffy. It tastes like if you have to mash pistachio and coffee together inside the same little nut bean <laughs> shell and they had a baby, that's exactly what it tastes like. It's really creamy and fluffy and nutty. I ordered like a chocolate espresso. So similar to Mateo's, mine has an espresso shot at the bottom, but then the whole top is just filled with cream and milk and chocolate syrup and cacao powder, and it tastes delicious. <laughs> Behind me is the Palermo Cathedral. If you saw a Sheffalu video, then you would have seen the Duomo that was in that video. This is the sister church to that one. This cathedral is the one that houses King Roger II's tomb, as he created this cathedral as well. This church, together with the one in Sheffalu and the one in Monreale, which is pretty much a 40 minute drive away, 
are all listed as one UNESCO World Heritage Site in Sicily. This is definitely one of the more unique cathedrals we've seen. It feels less like a typical Italian cathedral and a little bit more like a fortress or a castle. So if you've been to Italy, you know that you have to cover your shoulders before going into a church, especially a cathedral like this one. And it's so hot that I didn't bring a jacket with us, but Matteo <laughs> had a towel in his backpack. So I think that's gonna be my saving grace right now. <laughs> I feel really awkward because now I look like the American flag unintentionally. <laughs> Matteo's Italian tip of the day, whenever you're in a city in Italy and it's extremely hot, try and find a free church to enter because they are really cool inside as the walls are thick as anything and no sunlight heats up the inside. Behind me is the tomb of King Roger II, one of the kings of Sicily, and the man who built this cathedral. As tombs of kings go, this is definitely one of the less lavish ones that I've come across. I was expecting a bit more gold, a bit more chalices and paintings and art and statues. It's pretty simple and just a little bit underwhelming. We are currently on the roof of the cathedral and this view is unreal. You have a 360 degree view of Palermo. You see the water, you see the whole square and piazza from the top and you get an up close look at all of the towers and columns of the cathedral. It is absolutely breathtaking. Not to mention it's breezy and we sweaty. Also, I would like to take a moment to apologize to my mother for wearing shorts this short inside of a Catholic church. Sorry, mom. Um, I feel like I just lost 10 points to go to heaven. My beat. It's just really hot today. <laughs> So this has become our favorite street in Palermo. It's called Via Macuerda. And whether it's day or night, this street is pumping. It is full of restaurants and bars and shops. And there's just such a lively atmosphere here that it just feels like you're really in the heart of Palermo. Another reason this street is great is because there's so many restaurants that they all seem to have really great prices, probably to win your business. So you can get Aperol Spritz for three euros, delicious pasta for five euros. And in a city like this, prices can get pretty high. So it's really nice to get food for such a great deal that tastes delicious. So for lunch, we decided to go to Churma because it has an amazing seafood menu. And we've been eating so much pizza and pasta since coming to Italy that we thought it was time to mix it up a bit. Grazie mille. We haven't had a poke bowl in so long. This one has mozzarella on it, which is pretty Italian, so I'm very excited to try that. I can eat mozzarella on anything. This is a fish seafood bruschetta. We've never had a fish or seafood bruschetta before, and it looks divine. I'm a very particular fish person. I sometimes love fish, I sometimes hate it. But this is a concoction. I have no idea what's on what, but I guess we'll find out. Very fishy, but I do like it. 
I like fish. It's deep fried and basted. Yeah. This is an acquired taste for me. I mean, it does taste good to try something new. So weird. But good. Different. This is really good, but it's definitely different from the other poke bowls I've had before. There's a lot of flavor though. Now that we have demolished the plate, I think we figured out what was on each one. The first one seemed to have been eggplant with capers. The second one was more of like a ceviche kind of shrimp bruschetta. And this one seems almost like a smoked salmon or trout with caramelized onion. And I think this is the winner. This was my favorite one. They were all delicious, but this one has, it's like an explosion of flavor. Definitely different and interesting. So I'm really happy we tried. We are currently at a place known as the Four Corners. Quattro Conti or Quattro Conti? Quattro Conti. Quattro Conti. Tu devi dire Piazza Villena. Si dice si pronuncia Villena. Il primo è più facile. Villena, Villena era il nome di un re spagnolo che viveva qui a Palermo. Quando è morto lui, in suo onore hanno messo questo nome. Capito? Sì, è difficile per... Quattro Canti. <laughs> so we are currently at a point where two main streets in Palermo intersect. It is known as Quattro Canti, or the Four Corners. The Four Corners are known for their perfectly symmetrical facades. Each of them have three levels. The first level is the season, the second level is the king, and the third level is the saint. Behind me is Teatro Massimo. It is the third largest opera house in Europe after the one in Paris and Vienna. Inaugurated in 1897, it is still in use today. Two scenes for The Godfather 3 were filmed here. scenes in Godfather 3 was filmed right there in the royal box. Our house is going to be modeled exactly after this. Maybe a little bit smaller. This place is incredibly large <laughs> and it's actually the video doesn't really do it justice at all. 5 p.m. Palermo update. Michelle and I have the tendency to explore a little bit too much and well after about 10 kilometers of walking around the city we kind of just find ourselves wandering around forgetting what we're actually doing but yeah now we're on to the next place the famous mural in Palermo and it's apparently a stunning park hmm. on our walk through the city we've come across the beautiful marina the water looks so fresh on this hot day. I see an MSC cruise ship peeping out the back there and it brings a little tear to my eye because some of you may know that me and Matteo used to work on the cruise ships before COVID. It was an awesome place to work. Behind me is a famous mural in Palermo. It is of two judges, Borsellino e Falcone. They were both judges back in the 90s fighting in cases against the mafia and they were tragically murdered in car bombings. If you're from the ancient times and you arrived in Palermo by the port, you would have had to come through Porta Felice. This is the ancient gate to the city and it used to have an arch at the top, which from what I understand was damaged in the bombings in World War II. Low key, 
the elevator in this hotel makes me feel like I'm in the Italian job because there's a gate and then you gotta push through the doors. Welcome, step on in. I always forget to close the gate. I feel like I'm in the Italian job. Why am I British all of a sudden? Okay, oh, I feel like I'm James Bond, I do. Oh, I've got to close the door when I come out. Move. In our next episode, we head to the street food markets of Palermo, where we savor some Sicilian dishes and sample some, uh, interesting Palermo street food delicacies. If you find us funny, give us a like, give us a subscribe, do all those things. Bye.